Look at all of you showing up on the weekend. I do appreciate that. I know you've got a plethora of other choices of things you could be doing, and you chose to watch my video. Thank you very much. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of June 7th. Now, if you haven't had the privilege of seeing my show before, what I like to do here is share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every single day, all week, all month. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find anywhere. The OTC market, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. There is no lack of penny stocks. But I'm on a mission to find a particular type of penny stock. A hot penny stock. A penny stock with heat. A penny stock that has potential to make us money. And I found one for us. This is Mies Energies International, ticker M-E-I-L. Now this company is in the green sector and she is under the radar. Way under the radar. Now, we've looked at a lot of green companies. We've been looking at hydrogen, EV, lithium, solar, and all these companies have the same goal in mind, to eliminate or limit the amount of CO2 carbon being put into the atmosphere, which is crucial. We've got to start doing something here because we've been polluting our air for a very, very long time. But that's not the only ecological disaster we're dealing with right now. Our water is being polluted at an incredible rate right now by oil. We've had oil over a hundred years and it is killing the planet faster than you can imagine. And this company is selling a product to replace oil. It is a bio oil and this can change everything. And they are getting attention from the right people. Investors aren't watching, but the government is. And that's why I'm sharing this with you now. So Meal, she finished the day at 1.85 cents and she was down about 9% today. Now she's on the OTC, the pink tier, which is the riskiest tier. We have to be careful looking for that validated information. Validated information is very thin when it comes to pinks. Your financials normally aren't 10 Ks or 10 Qs, which are audited. That's validated. We normally get disclosures, just numbers passed off to us. The only validated information you get with pinks are right here. Verified profile and a verified transfer agent. This is the best you're going to get. So this is looking pretty good. So what is Mies Energies International about? Well, we're going to start with this wee description here and then we're going to jump on over to their website. On December 23rd, 2022, Mies Energies finalized the acquisition of Earth Friendly Products. Earth Friendly Products is an innovative green tech company manufacturing and marketing environmentally acceptable products that combine domestically sourced renewable feedstocks with proprietary technologies molded around the four ideologies of being earth friendly. That being biodegradable, recyclable, renewable, and environmentally safer, meaning non-hazardous, non-toxic, with no VOCs and minimal environmental impact, regardless of the product categories or the go-to market channels our products are sold in and compete in. Now let's dive on over to the website to get the serious information. This is the company's website. This is Meads.com and it is a good site. We've got lots of good information here, so we're not going to have to bounce around doing our due diligence. Jumping right on into it, Meads Energy is a totally green, clean tech, renewable energy company that manufactures and markets an assortment of biolubricants. By combining domestically sourced, farm-grown, bio-derived feedstocks with proprietary technologies for superior performance, all molded around and supporting the four ideologies of being green. That being, being renewable, biodegradable, recyclable, and most important, non-toxic. We're tired of the poisons, poisoning the earth, the vegetation, the animals, ourselves. A lot of people jump to the conclusion that if something is biodegradable, it's safe. That's not true. There's a lot of hazardous materials that break down into smaller particles and are always dangerous, regardless of the size of their pieces. And that's why we have the EPA. The EPA, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, has already 
outline properties for products like this company has. And the EPA calls these products environmentally acceptable lubricants, or the abbreviated version EELS. And we're going to call it EELS. And they are targeting three primary environmental traits, biodegradability, aquatic toxicity, and bioaccumulation. Now you may know what these mean, but just in case, biodegradability, decomposing. They want it to break down, deteriorate, get smaller and smaller and smaller until we just don't see it anymore. Minimal aquatic toxicity, let's keep our waters clean. Low toxicity to aquatic organisms. If you're affecting the fish, you're affecting the water. If you're affecting the water, you're going to affect us and everything else. We got to stop that. And the last one, bioaccumulative. The buildup of chemicals within the body, within the tissues of an organism over time. And this happens with a lot of chemicals, a lot of minerals. Matter of fact, I know that aluminum is a problem. We use way too much aluminum in our society. We use it for our eating utensils, put it in our mouth. We use it for our pots and pans, heat them up and cook our food in it. We put our beverages in aluminum cans. We are getting minute particles of aluminum all the time and it's accumulating somewhere. Where? In the brain. This is what scientists say is causing Alzheimer's disease. So let's be aware of that accumulation stuff. Now, what's most important about this company right now? They're ahead of the curve. The whole world is starting to think green. We're looking at a lot of problems trying to fix them. We've been working on pollution for a long time. We are recycling. We're turning to electric vehicles, hydrogen energy, solar power. We're doing a lot. And sooner or later, the governments are going to start noticing the problem we have with petroleum products and how we can fix it. They'll start putting laws on the books, making garages and companies and people like us start using safer products. Well, they're already starting that. Laws are getting on the books. We've got three general examples here. I've got to presume this one has to do with boats. The vessel general permit requires vessels to use eels in all oil to sea interfaces. Then the USDA has a bio-preferred program already in place. They're set up and waiting for this. The USDA designated and added engine crankcase oils and other lubrication applications to their mandated federal procurement program. Federal agencies and their contractors must give preferential consideration to these lubrication categories that contain a minimum of bio-based content of at least 25%. Now, I don't know what the bio-based content is in their product. I'm going to presume it's over 25%. I get the feeling it's up close to 80, 90%, somewhere in there. But I honestly don't know, so don't quote me. Then we have the executive order, which requires federal agencies to give purchase preference to bio-preferred, bio-derived, bio-based products. In other words, once they're approved, don't go looking elsewhere for products. You buy the products from our approved vendors. And guess what? This company is one of those approved vendors. Now, as I said, the problem is the poisoning. We are poisoning the planet. We are poisoning our water. But do you realize how bad it is? I'm going to shake up your world here, and I don't mean to do it, but you need to know the truth. Just one gallon of used oil can contaminate over one million gallons of water. Really? One gallon of oil can ruin one million gallons of water. Folks, let me put this in other terms. Think of it as a reverse stock split. One to one million. Yeah, now you get it, right? It's pretty bloody huge. Well, it gets worse, sorry to say. Every year, 10 billion gallons of liquid petroleum hydrocarbons in the form of motor oil and other industrial lubricants are released into the environment due to human activity. What? 10 billion gallons a year. A year. Folks, they tell us up here that one gallon will ruin 1 million gallons of fresh water. Well, how many gallons of water is that? That's 1 million times 10 billion. I'll be honest, folks. I don't even know what that number is. Forget about the calculation. Once you gave it to me, I don't know if I know what it's called. That's going to be a huge number. That's way, 
way too much poison in our waters. It gets worse. <laughs> I'm not laughing because it's bad. I'm just surprised that we've been living with it this long. Worldwide oil spills dating from 1901 to 2013. We're talking over 100 years equal 2.2 billion gallons. That's it, folks. And it is estimated that the same amount is silently being spilled every 100 days. Folks, 2.2 billion gallons every 100 days? Our planet cannot hold up to this. 4.3 billion gallons of motor oil and other lubricants are lost in everyday normal use being leaked onto the road or burned in the engine as the average car loses a year two gallons. Two gallons just from normal use. It's dripping, it's being burned for every single car, two gallons. And when you average out how much oil is being gotten rid of in the wrong way, it averages out to about one gallon for every car. So between everyday normal use, you got two gallons, and then you've got one gallon of improperly disposed oil, that's three gallons per car. How much is that? How many cars are out there? I have no idea. I couldn't even give a guess and think I was close. I honestly don't know. What I know is we're talking about huge, huge numbers of a continuing problem that has no end in sight unless we stop using petroleum products. They go on to tell us that 1.8 billion gallons of used motor oil and lubricants are illegally dumped, ending up in soil or downstorm water drains. And remember, it only takes one gallon of oil to contaminate one million gallons of drinking water. Everybody thinks it's no big deal. You know, it's really sad because we have recycling facilities. All they have to do is take the oil to them. But that's just it. People are negligent, derelict maybe even lazy, they won't do the right thing. Instead, they'll walk to the field next to their property and pour it in the ditch. It was just a little bit of oil. Nobody saw me do it. No big deal. And how many people are doing that? A lot. Over 60% of all oil-related pollution in the USA is caused by the improper disposal of used motor oil, making it the single largest source of oil pollution in our nation's waterways. Now, I'm going to sum this all up in this white paragraph here. It isn't good news either. Of the 11 billion gallons of lubricants consumed each year, 28% are lost in just everyday normal regular use and are released into the environment. That's a lot. That's just shy of one third. 16% are improperly or illegally disposed. 34% are burned as fuel, and 12% are used in asphalt. Well, when you add all those numbers up, you're up around 85, 88, somewhere around there. 85% of 11 billion gallons are ending up in the earth, ending up in our water supply. How are we going to survive at this rate, folks? Change has to come. And when the government makes this change, this company is going to be front line. Now, there's more to the problem than just getting rid of the oil the wrong way. Even doing the right thing is hurting our country, hurting the world. You're redoing your oil. You're emptying out the old. You got that over there. Now you got your new oil. You're pouring that in. You get it all out of there. You put the lid back on and you toss it in the trash at the gas station. What's the gas station do? Well, of course, they send their trash to the landfill all the gas stations do and all those empty bottles are at the landfill and all those empty bottles have oil residue in them you're thinking but that doesn't add up to much does it approximately 37 and a half million gallons of petroleum oil is dumped into the usa landfills each year from the more than 3 billion used motor oil bottles trashed with oil residue still left in them so yes, it is a serious problem. 37.5 million gallons. That's, that's way too much, folks. So they've come up with a solution for that. They have a packaging solution. They have created a flat bag that is biodegradable, recyclable, and reusable. Now they've got a lot of recyclable products. They have these flat bags, which are like the juicy bags that you give your kids. You put a straw in it and 
they drink out of it. Well, that's exactly what these are, except you don't get a straw with it. They've also got the six gallon tote for your garages and your companies. And for those that really use a lot of oil, they have the drums. Well, here's what's really neat about this. You and me, we're gonna go change our oil. We go out and buy our six bags of oil, quarts or liters, whatever they are. You get a self-addressed, self-stamped envelope. It's prepaid for. All you have to do is take these bags and put them in the envelopes and mail them back to the company. You don't have to clean them. You don't have to go to any facility. Just walk to your own mailbox and drop them in and voila, you've done your good deed. I love that. And when it comes to their other big products, the Eco Tote, which carries six gallons and their barrow here, obviously these are for garages and other companies. When they get their deliveries and get new oil, the company picks up the old empty totes and the old empty barrels, takes them back, cleans them, and reuses them. So we are cutting down how much oil we're getting into our landfills, which is a lot of oil, folks. Now let's look at the other side of the coin, performance. We know it's ecologically sound. It's good for the world. It's good for us. But is it good for our machines? Is it good for our vehicles? Well, the short answer is yes. There is data to back that up, and I'm going to share that with you here in just a minute. It has been tested rigorously by people who know their business about oils, and this has proven itself to be superior to petroleum products. They tell us that it was, has superior anti-wear protection. It had excellent performance in both hot and cold environments. Its drop-in compatibility with petroleum-based products was no problem, so it could mix with other petroleum products and still function perfectly. Reduced CO2 emissions and fully compatible with existing recycling and re-refining infrastructures. This is all good. The fact that the bio oil is compatible with regular oil is going to make the phase in and phase out better. You know, it's not like we're going to start using bio oil and stop using oil. You've seen how that worked with combustible engines and EVs. There is a long changeover period. So the fact that they can work together and we're not going to have to change anything to use the product, that is most excellent. Now we got a lot of data here about the oil. I'm going to let you dive into that if you want to get into those stats. But I want to talk to you about how they tested this. Yes, they did have NASCAR test this. And ever since they started using the product, the cars that use the bio oil have never had an engine blow up. That says something. Who else is testing this product? Well, how about the DOD and the DLA within a variety of military and government entities, including the United States Parcel Service, the United States Air Force, Department of Homeland Security, and GSA. Testing began in January of 2016 and lasted two years, ending in January of 2018. And they came up smelling like roses, folks. Their product was better than petroleum products. So they were approved as a vendor for the government. B2 will be allowed to bid on government procurement assignments. And we were just reading how they will get preferential treatment because they're approved. So we're just waiting for a huge contract to be dropped into their lap. And the great thing about these contracts from the government isn't just that they're big. A lot of them are long. They're open-ended contracts. I do believe they call them IDIQ, indefinite duration, indefinite quantity. So this is what we're looking at here. It is all looking really good to me. Now, since we're on this page, let's get some of the B2 bio oil benefits. Innovative formula is ultimate biodegradable, which means the product will degrade over 60% within 28 days. That's fast. Innovative formula contains bio content that has been proven to reduce CO2 emissions of upwards to 69% versus conventional oils. That's great. While reducing our dependency on foreign oil, we never even brought that up. We'll never need foreign oil again if we can farm our own oil here. Innovative formula contains renewable ingredients that can be domestically sourced and manufactured here. Innovative packaging embraces best practices, sustainable solutions, 
offering product in proprietary collapsible recyclable plastic bags and repurposed recyclable steel drums. Now I got a few tidbits of other information here I want to share with you that actually came from their most recent financial. Couldn't find this information anywhere else and it's important. The company will produce and sell a line of fully biodegradable lubricants. This will include, but not be limited to, B2 oil. The products are sourced from plant oil, such as palm, soybean, and are possible replacements for present motor oils. Back in December of 2022, the company acquired 100% of the outstanding common stock of earth-friendly products. Earth Friendly is now operated as a subsidiary of the company. And here's a list of the products that they have. Hydraulic fluid, engine oil for both cars and small trucks, heavy duty diesel oils for the larger trucks, small engine oils like for lawnmowers, chainsaw bar and chain oil, transformer oils for transformers, that's electrical components, and then marine oils, light and heavy, for boats. So they have covered the spectrum there, folks. Mies Energies blends and bottles all of its products in a warehouse in Tampa, Florida. The lease of the warehouse is furnished at no cost to the company. You gotta love that, don't you? So now you've got an idea of what the company's doing, what their products are, and who's looking at them. And they are a pre-revenue company, folks. They are setting up to take off, and the world is getting greener and greener by the day. I think this is a perfect time to be looking at them. Let's go take a look at that stock now. We've jumped back here to the otcmarkets.com website to get the rest of this information. And would you believe this is my go-to site for virtually all of my due diligence and research on any stock? Contrary to popular opinion, this site does not just cover OTC stocks. If it's on the market, this site covers it. They cover every single stock. I can't think of a better site to start your initial research and due diligence on. Seriously. So we're looking at Mies Energy's relative volume. Over the last 30 days, she's been roughing it at about 43,000 shares a day, which is definitely under the radar. Friday, she more than doubled her volume, kicking it up over 90,000 shares. Still under the radar. Share structure for meal. Not looking bad. Outstanding share count is under 100 million. We're at roughly 94 million. The insiders, the management, own most of those shares. They got roughly 80 million of them which leaves us on the open market only about 15 million shares. That is an excellent float, folks. Market cap for meals is pretty low. She's down there at 1.7 million. Financials for meals. As I told you, she is a pre-revenue company. She's not making anything yet. Nothing annually, nothing quarterly. Coming down to that balance sheet. Now, don't forget, we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down on these charts. So cash in the bank, don't forget those three zeros. <laughs> She's got zero in the bank. Ow. Total assets, we got 7.1 million. And total liabilities, oh, look at that, way down there, 1.4 million. Which means even though she's not making any revenues right now, we're not holding deficit. We do have positive stockholder equity in this company of $5.6 million. Checking out the disclosures for the company. We have nothing here since 2017, but we do have a recent quarterly report that didn't show up in the financials. Not that any of the numbers have really changed that much, but there was something I wanted to share with you. In these financials, all the way down at the bottom, and I mean literally the bottom, they have this thing called subsequent events. Subsequent events are things that happened while they were, were preparing the financials that they couldn't get in to the financials and they list them at the very bottom. And you can find all sorts of things, good news and bad news down here. I'm always looking down here for things and I found something here. Now, this is bad news, but I see it as good news, kinda. In March of 2024, the company fulfilled two orders of their products to a national customer and they were picked up at their facility by a vetted transportation company. 
This transaction has now been deemed fraudulent as an imposter posing as national company employees committed a crime as all parties, including me's, are victims of this theft, which is under investigation by both national and local law enforcement agencies. The company anticipates a loss no greater than $40,000. So they got ripped off. Somebody came with trucks and picked up all this bio oil and left. And nobody who was supposed to be involved was there. So they got ripped off. That's definitely bad news. So how do I see it as good news? <laughs> well, the way I see it, their product is so valuable that somebody wanted to steal it. You don't steal junk. You steal things of value. So I'm thinking this is a good sign, even though it's bad news. All right, let's go jump on over into their news now because they do have a lot of news. So I am going back here a ways back, folks, all the way to February of last year. And we need to go back there because that's when they closed this deal. Mies Energies International acquires Florida-based Earth-Friendly Products, Inc. Now, before I go diving into this, I'm going to read the rest of these headlines because I have got about four or five pieces of news here that I do want to touch on to. So this one came out in February 2023. We're going to dive into this one. In April of 2023, Leon Asset Management signs a joint venture. We're going to read that one. This one we already talked about, B2 Buy Oil is government approved and assigned an NSN number. So now they are in with the government. Any government agency that wants to buy bio oil is supposed to go to their list and buy from people who have been approved. They're vendors. This is one of their vendors. And I don't think they have any other vendors selling bio oil. October 2023, Mies secures facility to scale up production to satisfy demand. We're going to get into that one too. This one came out in December. Mies Foley OTC compliant. What? Oh, that's Foley. They spelt it wrong. Mies is now fully OTC compliant as orders are getting filled. And then the most recent piece of news, which came out May 16th, Mies formulates with renewable and refined base stocks. Now let's dive into each one of these and see what we can learn here. This one came out over a year ago, February 22nd, 2023. This is when they closed their deal with earth friendly products. Mies Energies, Today announced it has finalized the acquisition of Earth Friendly Products, the manufacturer and marketer of B2 Bio Oil and other biolubricants. Now, this is really important, folks. This is a ground floor opportunity, not just this company, this sector. While this segment is less than 1.5% of the total global finished lubricant market, its growth is significantly faster than the others. 1.5% of the world's supply of oil is being supplemented with bio oil. That's it. 1.5%. This market is just waiting to explode and it is a necessary product. We absolutely need this, folks. The next piece, of, no, before I jump into that next piece of news, I wanted to share this picture with you. Earth Friendly Products doesn't just work with bio oil. They also have cleaning products, lots of them. I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see. These are all their different types of cleaning products that they have in all sorts of stores. They are in Walmarts. They're in a lot of other stores as well. But the bio oil product is the one that is going to change the world. The next piece of news we got, this came out April 20th, 2023. Today, Leon Asset Management, ticker L-E-O-N, announced signing a joint venture with Mies Energies. The parties intend to combine their strengths by establishing and investing in a joint venture company to engage in the business of biolubricant production, distribution, and sales. And this is going to cover everything, the growing, sourcing, procuring, producing and packaging, inventory, warehousing, order fulfillment, order solicitation, customer service, everything. 
within and throughout the region of Western Africa, known as ECOWAS. There are 15 participating West African countries involved in this. This joint venture will have many moving parts, so we will be announcing several additional press releases over the coming months. Now, we haven't had any more news since then. This came out April of 2023. I think we're overdue for some more news. Next piece of news came out October 2nd, 2023. The company is pleased to confirm that their ability to expand the production and increase their fulfillment capabilities through the Tampa, Florida-based Total Logistics Company, another company they've made a deal with for the facility. This strategically located facility, fulfilling current online direct-to-consumer and customer orders, responding to the Department of Defense and DLA quotes requests, and bidding on government orders via SAM.gov, as well as producing in bulk quantities for international purchase orders destined to be repackaged locally. This facility is doing everything. They are creating goods to sell to consumers, to sell to the Department of Defense, to the DLA, to the rest of the world. Next piece of news came out December 29th, 2023. The company is pleased to report fulfillment of recent military purchase orders as a result of B2's DOD DLA testing and SNS's assignment. Right? They're an approved vendor, so they just got their first order. We are very happy to confirm that we are producing and getting our commercially viable B2 bio oil lubricants commercially available for the marketplace. So it sounds like they're working with the government and they're getting ready to work with the consumers. Everything is in motion and we're getting closer now. Now we're up to December. Last piece of news, the only piece of news we have for this year, came out May 16th. Mies Energies reformulates its biolubricants to meet the new industry standardized fluid specifications. We are continuing to provide consumers high quality bio-based lubricants that meet stringent performance standards at the same time have the ability upon disposal to biodegrade quickly and nearly complete within 28 days. I guess that's the standard for the government. They want this stuff virtually gone in 28 days, a February month, and that's it. And this company has made the refinements to meet that criteria. So everything is looking really good here, folks. They've got facilities. They have made deals with other companies that are helping them. They are producing the products for the consumers, for the military, for the government, and for the rest of the world. They said they already had an order. So we should see revenues coming out the next quarter. I'm excited about this, folks. 1.5% of all the oil in the world has been replaced by bio oil. We've got a long ways to go. This market could literally explode, folks. This is a great time to be considering this while nobody else is watching it. All right, let's go take a look at that chart. Uh, let's do some charting now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at Meads Energies, ticker M-E-I-L. And I got it opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. It was a full year ago, we had our 52-week low of a penny and a half. In January, we had our 52-week high of 10 cents. Between those two bubbles, you've got over a 600% run. After the high bubble, you've got over a 600% fall, so to speak. She came right back down to where she was at a year ago, settling on this strong support of just over a penny and a half. She came down and hit it, bounced off of it, and she is just hovering over it right now, going sideways, looking to me like she's waiting. Waiting for these SMAs, the 200 haul, the 50, and the 20, which have all crossed down underneath the 200 to start turning around and start climbing again. And then the price will start to climb as well. Our oscillators, all of them, our PPO, our MACD, our RSI, are all a bit weak. All of them are dipping down just a little bit. Looking at our six-month, four-hour view. So we had a nice climb and rip 
up to that 10 cents and then a solid fall through the 200 back down to this strong support which she bounced off of and is going sideways waiting for our SMAs to turn around and start climbing. This is looking good here because our 20 and our 9 day have already gone flat. Our 50 day SMA is actually crossing the 200 haul to get on top of it and that's important. To get a proper climb on the chart you need your SMAs in the right order meaning you want the smallest one on the top, the nine day SMA, and you want your biggest ones on the bottom, the 200 haul, the 200 SMA, and all the rest in order. This is getting in order right now. Our osculators, they're working on recovering, but there is still some coolness here. All of them are dipping just a little bit on our four hour chart as well. Let's come on down to that 20 day, one hour view. All right, as you can see, we don't have a lot of bars here. She hasn't been getting a lot of trading. She has literally been under the radar. We don't have a 200-day SMA on our one-hour chart. 50-day is boss. She had a big rip through that 50-day SMA, but then came back down to the slow bubble. She's been beating her head underneath this 50-day, trying to get on top. She's really fighting it right now, and she is right at that point halfway right now sitting on that 50 day SMA with a lot of volume coming in at the end of Friday. Osculators still don't show any strength. They're not really cold. They're just not showing any strength. They're all kind of going sideways right now except for our RSI which is still dipping a little bit and still underneath 55. Coming in, down to our five minute. Whew. Kind of naked right? We're getting like one bar a day. Oh, we had two bars that day. Not a lot of trading, folks. I keep saying it. She is under the radar right now. So we've got one SMA here, our nine day SMA. We don't have a 20 day, we don't have a 50, a 200, 200 haul. This is all we've got. And basically, she is going sideways. She is trying to climb, but she keeps coming back down to this same zone right here. I'm not seeing a lot of heat in the chart. I'll be honest there, but she does have some heat, especially back on that four hour, one hour. You can see she came down to this low, a 52 week low. She's bounced off of it and she's not showing any signs of wanting to come down. She isn't laying on top of it. She's hovering over it, showing signs that she wants to climb, going sideways, waiting patiently. That's the key word. We've got to be patient here. Once all of these SMAs come down and start to curve around and climb, I am pretty confident that this price is going to get on top of this 200-day SMA and start to climb. I like this company. The chart, okay, the chart needs help, but the company is in the right place. Little competition, hot product, and we need it, folks. The world needs to quit destroying our water supply at this rate. We're not going to be able to survive, folks. So do some more due diligence. There's a lot more information out there about this company. I think when you do, you're going to be as excited as I am. Mees, ticker M-E-I-L. I'm liking it. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba-da-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-